Okay, keep having issues with this video. Cutting off and problems in between and interruptions. But, um, alright, so this is for micro coils for the Pro Tank, Peru Tank, EVOD, and tanks like that that use that particular coil head. Um, this is going to be um, a rebuild on the, the Pro Tank uh, coil head. Uh, just for the fact that I bought them as replacements because they had uh, a longer uh, chimney piece on the coil head itself, so I wanted to try that over the smaller chimney on the Prairie Tank coil heads, which I believe is the same as the, uh, the EVODs. This is actually what I have in here right now. It's a micro coil uh, with cotton setup at uh, 3.5 ohms I got it running right now at 5.5 volts and uh, I did it in the first video and I was having issues with it leaking and because uh, I, I just I just started doing the micro coils so I did the video, but I was having a very bad leaking problem, so I left a flavor wick on here. Um, well, I made a flavor wick out of cotton, but um, so it's got a cotton, cotton wick and a cotton flavor wick. Um, but bas basically, the things you need is a 564s uh, drill bit, which comes out to 1.98 millimeter which is almost two millimeters um, and it's just a, the reason why I use this one instead of a, a 1 16 drill bit is because I, I like the way that this sits in the, the base of the coil head itself so that it ain't, it ain't all the way down on the, uh, the base of the coil head which makes it hard to, to feed uh, the coil through the actual uh, or feed cotton through the actual coil. So, take this off. I did not use the rubber grommet, which I don't know. Ah, here it is. So, mm -hmm. tweezers help for a lot of things doing this small work, but that's the uh, rubber grommet. Hopefully that auto focuses. So I'm not using that. So you need drill bit, tweezers. Um, I got my uh, my ruler and I cut it because uh, I only need four inches of it, and it's kind of long in my my little tackle box. So I just cut it to where I wanted it. Now you might want to make your uh, your piece of wire a little bit longer when you're first starting, like maybe five inches instead of four because I do this and I use just enough wire and that's it. I don't use any more than I need. So it might be a good idea to start with five inches of wire just so that you get the hang of it instead of using four like me. I've already built like 13 coils now so I'm pretty good with doing this so nail clippers I find they cut you know a little bit better than uh, wire snippers that I have so now we got this um, I uh, would recommend a torch just for the simple fact that when you're when you're squeezing this with your, uh, your needle nose players here in a minute when I show you what I do to make the micro coils perfect uh, a lighter doesn't really heat up the coils as well, so you're going to want a torch. Um, but first off, you're going to want to get the springiness out of your canthal. So we'll grab this canthal and just uh, get as much as you possibly can on that. Use the needle nose, grab this, and torch it. And this is just to get the springiness out of this uh, canthal because it's kind of hard to wrap it, so you want to make it as easy as possible. Okay, let that cool down a second. <clears throat> so, four inches canthal. There's my canthal. My drill bit. 
Um, tweezers help a lot. Um, and then your nail clippers and then little scissors for your cotton wick. I'll show you how I do that in a second. So we don't need camp all no more. We can put that away. Um, don't need this rubber grommet, so I'll put it back in there. Um, don't need my drip tip at this moment, put it back in there. My airflow controller, which is nice for uh, the Provary and uh, the tanks of, of these styles for the simple fact that uh, that they kind of give you an airflow issue. So. so. Let's make sure the slider's still out of the way. Trying to give me an idea of where the camera lens is directly at, so I can kind of try to do close-ups as best as I can. Um, Alright, so we'll start wrapping this. I usually uh, use the base of the uh, of the coil head to give me an exact uh, measurement of how you know how I'm going to wrap this. Usually, what I do is I kind of start it like this. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to do nine wraps, so it's already at one, two. Try to get them as close as you can. Three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm not going to get nine, so that's seven, eight, and maybe I, maybe I might, no, I'm not going to get nine, so I, a little bit too much length on the other side, but that's, that's okay, so we're at eight, I'll hold this side. Two. Nine. Ten. Okay, so let's just count them real quick. We got one, two, three, four. And I lost count already. Four. Five. Six. That's, I think that's too many. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's one too many, and it seems like it's short anyway, so that's not too big a big deal. So I'll just kind of pull it out a little bit. Okay, so we got. 10 wraps, and how I'm counting it is the top. Okay, so the top is 10 wraps, on the bottom it's going to be 9, so it's a, a 9 10 wrap. 10 on top, 9 on bottom. Or is it 9 on bottom? It might not be, it might be 8. Okay, I don't know why that matters. Okay. Anyway, so how we're going to get this to be a perfect micro coil, we're going to take it off of the drill bit and we're going to squeeze it in between our pliers here. And you want to include the legs on this, so try to include the legs and squish it together. Once you do that, you're going to want to torch it. And this is why I said a torch is good because the lighter's not going to heat it up well in between the the pliers so and you want to get a, a a bowl of water ready too I got a bowl of cold water right there that as soon as you heat this up nice while you're squeezing it don't squish it but just give it some nice nice pressure to just keep the coils together and then just heat it up Make sure it's nice and heated before you dip it in the water. And hurry up, dip it in there. And it's already cooled down by now. And it's going to hold the form that you had it in before you dipped it in the water. And that's why you squeeze it with the needle nose pliers. So that's done. And perfect. So it's a perfect micro coil now. And I'll try to show you this close up. 
Uh, let me turn off my autofocus. Okay, autofocus off. Turn it on. I didn't catch it. Okay, hold on. There we go. Alright, so you can see that's a perfect, perfect coil. They're all touching. It's got a little, little, little bit of a deformity there, but it'll work out fine. That's not a big deal. Turn it out of focus. Back on. Okay. So now we'll take out the bottom base here. And we'll unscrew this head. And this has already got the cotton and everything in there, which is not a big deal. So I'll pull that off. Sometimes it's better to use pliers if you can't get it. Um, and tweezers help with this. So, flavor wick. Because I'm going to be using the flavor wick now because I was having problems with it last time. I don't know why. So, pull off your bottom firing pin. And then you'll pull out your uh, insulator. Well, you can see that little insulator. And then you got your wick and your coil. And pull that out. This is a nice, nice micro coil, but I'm rebuilding it for the purpose of this video. So there we go. Now, since you've done that. Dip your fingers in the water and get that that juice off. Nice. Right, get back to trying to have some dry fingers here. Um, and you put your drill bit back through your coil just so it doesn't get messed up while you're trying to do this. And have it about there so you can work with both sides of the drill bit. And then you're just going to squeeze these legs together. Oh, and there went that on the floor. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't see anything on it. Just dip it in the water real quick just to get whatever may have gotten on there off. Alright, doesn't matter if it's wet. Just needs to be dry when you put that cotton in it. But we got some work to do, so. I'll just get that in there and then one side. And what I like to do to make this nice nice and snug is grab the needle nose pliers. And you're only going to pull one of these legs off to the side. Look down in the hole and see where it's coming from. This one's coming from up top over here on this, this side. So we're just going to grab it and pull it kind of snug and then pull it over the edge. So I'll get you a close up of that. So, pull that one leg over the edge, and then we're going to grab that insulator, and we're going to put it, we're going to put that, that leg that you didn't bend over through the center of the insulator. And then we're going to put push this insulator on here. It's a little bit harder with, no, no, pretty, pretty easy. I thought it was going to be harder with that juice. Now we're going to take the, the leg that's through the center of the insulator and we're going to do the same thing with it, but we're going to pull it over the edge to the opposite opposite side. So give it a little, little snug and then pull it over and I'll get you a close up of that. And it's the, it's, it's the left autofocus. No, stop it. Okay, right there. Okay, stop. No, it's still blurry. Dang it. There we go, right there. Okay, so it's the left one. And you can see how it's through the center of the insulator. The first one was the one that's not through the insulator. It's just pulled over the side on the on the base of the coil head. And then you got the center one through the insulator. Pulled over the other way. And 
that's how you do that. Focus is good. Okay. Um, now you take your uh, your center firing pin and you just stick it in there. And I'll get you a close up of that. Okay. So here's your your center firing pin through the center of the insulator. And then you can let go of that because it's got the drill bit on there. So looks nice and good. All the coils are nice and nice and snug and touching each other. And then you can pull this drill bit right on out. Just twist it a little bit so you don't cause no friction. And pull it out. And then you want to center that coil. You see how it's off to the right side and, and touching this uh, this wall over here. So you want to get it back to the center and you want to keep it in that 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 little groove here. Okay. So we'll mess with that, but first, before we do that, this is not like other rebuildables. You can't leave the, the coil coil legs on to test it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, my nail clippers and I'm going to get as close as I possibly can to this insulator. And I'm going to cut that wire. Um, I wish it was a little bit closer, so we'll try to get another snip at it. That's good enough. Alright, so, and we're going to do the other leg. Like I said, get as close to that insulator as you can. Don't get the insulator, though. You don't want to mess that up. Um, I actually like the the Pro Tank insulators a little bit better than the Prairie Tank ones, just because they're easier to work with, but they are stiffer, so they tend to break easier than the Prairie Tank ones, which I don't like. But, like I said, I do like that they're kind of stiff. They're a little bit easier to work with. But they are more prone to breaking. So, I probably will not get them again. Unless I need more really tall chimneys uh, for my coil heads. Which I probably won't need. But, anyway, so now since we got this coil on here. It's a little bit close to this wall on this one side I, that I showed you. So before firing it or checking the ohms, I'm just going to pull it away from that wall. Nice and easy. Don't force it. Just kind of push it. And then I'm going to check my ohms here. So. Oh, that's 3.5. Perfect. Alright, so then we're going to fire this away a couple of times and Try to make sure this coil is doing all right. Bam! It fired right up, right out from the from the from the inside out immediately. No problems whatsoever. All right, firing great. I'm not liking the fact that this one side is kind of down more than the other. So we'll try to maneuver that a little bit so it's just stick your drill bit in there and kind of pull the one side up. Be very careful you don't want to mess that coil up. So, okay it's still firing good. It's not uh it's not as compact as I wanted it at the moment so I'm gonna fire it up real quick and then I'm going to release it and squish it together and then wait for it to cool down. So it was hot when I squished it together and then I'm just holding it and squished together until it cools down. And that's going to help it keep its form. So it's a, it's a little bit better, but not as great as I wanted it. But it's still a very, very good coil. So autofocus apparently was not on this whole time. But you see the coil starts from the inside and works its way out. That's a perfect micro coil. Turn that autofocus back on. Probably look blurry for a second there. But that's okay. Alright, so now that we got that done, we're going to want to thread a piece of cotton through there. So, set that down. Pull this coil head out this, uh, this base here. We'll just set that there and set that there and grab a cotton swab. Now, as long as it is Q-tip brand q-tips then you can use it without boiling 
it or anything like that. Someone on the ECF forums when I was looking to try out cotton, I was trying to find a way to easily try cotton and I found a, a post about Q-tip brand Q-tips that he contacted the makers of the Q-tips and they, they stated that they only use glue to stick the cotton to the stick and that's all they use on it. They don't use anything to spin the cotton or, or wrap the cotton or anything like that. They just put some a little bit of glue on the stick and then just kind of put the cotton on there and it works out great because then you just grab the tip of the Q-tip, grab it nice and firm, don't grab nothing that's on the stick and just yank it right off. And that's a box of 625 Q-tips and you can use one side of the Q-tip per wick and you're good to go. So you want to cut just as, as little as you possibly can off one side of the Q-tip so that you can work with it and then cut off this, this frayed part here. So you got that off. And now you can start working with it here. And try to pull off one thin, one thin layer of the outer side of the Q-tip just to make it a little bit smaller so that you can uh, work with it in the, uh, in the center of that coil so you gotta make sure it's the right size and I, I, I found that taking off just one single layer off the Q-tip that it uh, it does well for threading it through that coil so kinda wanna pull this apart not too much try to make it all even when you're pulling it apart but just kind of just pull it apart trying to uncompact it this video is getting kind of long and if I get to 33 minutes it's gonna cut off again I figured that out with my phone that once it gets to 33 minutes it automatically cuts off so and get this even as we can, and it's gonna look something kind of like that. Okay, and you want kind of like a kind of like a square, and then you're just gonna roll it up. You don't want to twist it. You want to kind of just gently roll it up. And I'm gonna also use a flavor wick because I, I did the video last time and I was getting a lot of leaking, and I ended up using a flavor wick. And uh, it, it, did, it didn't start gurgling or, or leaking on me. Because I'm not using a rubber grommet because it doesn't get enough juice to the cotton wick. And you might burn your wick. So that is why I don't use the rubber grommet on the top of the chimney. So we got this getting nice and, nice and good now. See, it's starting to look really well. So we'll just start rolling it don't twist it just while you roll it in your fingers try to compact it you don't want it really really compact you just want to compact it gradually evenly and that's just going to work for you because you want to thread it through this coil without it being completely compacted and this is why i don't suggest getting your fingers wet because it's going to compact it and it's going to be all screwed up so once you get this nice and rolled took off a very little bit of this end so it's not frayed so you don't have a hard time getting it through that coil so roll it just small enough to fit through that coil and you got to be fast so it's going to uncompact real fast so roll it till it's compacted nice and then stick it through that coil about about that much so he will get you a nice focus on that all right so you see that just like that and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the nail clippers and see that outer rim here that's what you're gonna cut that wick to the outer rim so get a better grip on that I almost dropped it okay so outer rim sniff it with the nail clippers if you got like a little frayed stuff hanging on to the cotton you just did. there you go get that off of there grab that put it over there okay so now we do this other side dang it I just dropped it mm. 
Glad there's nothing on the counter or anything. That would have just destroyed my wick. Okay, so even with that rim, cut it. Perfect. So that's that's it right there. That's exactly how you want it. Just like that. Okay, so let me turn this autofocus back on. Sit back down here. We're gonna make a little small flavor wick. I think that's no, that's the piece I cut off. I don't want that. Okay, so what I still have left of this wick is a decent amount. We'll just uh, get it the perfect size so we'll match it up with the wick that's already threaded through the coil. And we'll just cut it evenly with it. Because like I said, I, uh, I originally did this with no flavor wick. And uh, it kind of leaked. I saw the, the, the juice is just a little a little bit too fast on, the, on running through this. So, now that we got this cut to size, we're going to roll it one last time just to get it to fit nice. And then we're going to stick this chimney right on it so that it doesn't move. We don't want it to move around. So, got it in place, grab this chimney. And, oh, it got kind of, got kind of messed up there. Hold on. Now it's got juice on it too. Awesome. Well, I'm not gonna press too hard on it, but I'm gonna compact it a little, a little bit. And let's try to do this again without squishing it. Okay. So, still kind of messed up there. Oh, ah, there we go. I got it out the. It was getting uh, trapped up. The edge there all right so no uh no rubber grommet so that's what it looks like right. getting close 27 and a half minutes gotta start hurrying up here okay so I'll put this back in the, the base here and we're just gonna test test fire it check the arms real quick make sure nothing went wrong while we were messing around with everything okay so check the arms one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. all right and 3.5 all right and then we can, oh actually we can't give it a test fire because it's cotton don't test fire when it's cotton bad idea grab some uh some juice here can't dry burn these, you'll burn up the cotton. So, this is what I'm using in my tank. So, I'll uh, just try to saturate this, uh, this wick a little bit here just to get the wicking process started. Okay. Now, I don't want to put none on the center of the wick because I don't want it to already be flooded. So, what I do is just put a little bit there on the ends, put this back in there. And you're supposed to wait about an hour. Uh, I'm going to take this off, put my airflow controller on. <clears throat> but you're supposed to wait about an hour on cotton. But I didn't compress this really tight or get it wet with any other liquid. So it should be alright to vape it right away as long as I let it, you know, saturate the wick a little bit better. I'll give it a couple of minutes. Try to hurry up before this video gets a little bit too long, so we'll try to hurry up and do this. Get this airflow controller on. Okay. Okay, just getting the threads. Alright. Now we got that done. Perfect, looking good. Grip my drip tip. Let's see what time we're at. We're all done. That's all, all done, so. Roll this away. No. This way, this way. That away. Lighter back in here. So wick is great. I'm letting it kind of sink in there real quick. 
on. Let's see what time we're at. All right, through 30 minutes. So we got to hurry up. We got three minutes. Wow, three minutes. Okay. So this was uh, the old wick in coil. And then I used a flavor wick with it just over the top of it. But that was also a 3.5 coil. Looks really good, still in very good condition. I didn't even have to replace it, but for the video, I rebuilt it for you guys. That's the cotton. Not burnt or anything. It's very good. Take this bottle for this back off. How about, give us about another minute just to make sure that uh, it's got that wick pretty well. Like I said, you don't want to dry fire it. You dry fire it, then it's just completely ruined. You have to put another piece of cotton in there, which is not bad with these micro coils. You can literally open that up, take that chimney off, strip out that uh, that piece of cotton, and, and thread another one right through it as long as the coil's still good, and you're ready to rock again. You ain't got to worry about anything else. Just bam, just throw another one in there, throw a flavor wick on top. I found that works the best with the cotton setup. For some reason, it's just too much liquid getting into that area without the flavor wick. Um, so that's what works for me. Um, you can try it your own way, see how it works. Um, I wouldn't suggest using it with that rubber grommet if I'm using just a regular uh, piece of wick through the coil and flavor wick and getting enough juice. So if you put that rubber grommet on, you might not get enough juice, and then you'll dry burn that coil or that wick at one point. All right, let's see where we're at. 32. All right, I'm going to hurry up and hit this. Okay. Mm. Awesome. Not getting no dry, dry hit, no nothing, um, and it's already working out very well. It's working what, uh, well. No leaking, no gurgling. All right, have a good one.